God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, Lord. Oh, I just want to just start shouting right now. We have a message from God on following God's instructions. Thank you for joining the broadcast. We are here on Kingdom Purpose TV every Sunday, 5 p.m. Every for the Kingdom Purpose TV. And we are on Kingdom Purpose Radio. Yes, every Sunday at 6 p.m. Also, 2 p.m. on Wednesday for our 10-minute word break. And I just want to start off in this prayer today. This word is totally awesome. We are finishing up the X Factor. Exodus, how do you come out of bondage? How do you come out of slavery? How do you come out of depression? How do you come out of lack? Look, God has a word for you today. You don't want to miss this broadcast today. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Lord, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, Lord. Let your word go and flow as you have designed it, Lord. Let it meditate on our spirit in everything, get wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding. And Lord, we are asking you for complete wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the word today, which is Exodus, following God's instruction. Exodus, which means to exit whatever is holding you down. Exit your enemies, exit everything, exit lack, Exit whatever is holding you back in Jesus' name. And we're going to start here today at Exodus chapter 12. And verse number 12, the Lord said, This month is to be for you the first month. And that is the first month of your year. Ooh, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is good. Boy, you going to tell a friend, tell a neighbor to tune in today because this is the first month for your year to get what God has promised you. This is the first day of your month. And it reminds me a lot of basically like um, a birthday. Everyone's birthday is different. Everyone's birthday is on a different day. And this is the first day, which is your birthday for the new year for you. It's like we celebrate in America New Year's. Happy New Year. It's the first day of the first month for your year, and we wish everyone to be prosperous and successful for the entire new year, and I'm just telling you guys to make today the first day of your life for your new year that you are coming out of bondage, you are coming out of lack, you're coming out of depression, you're coming out of stress, you're coming out of anxiety, you are coming out. And you are taking your entire household with you. You're taking your kids. You're taking your friends. You're taking your mom, dad, sisters, brothers, cousins. You are taking your entire neighborhood and community with you. God has a promise for you. And he does not want you to miss it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this is your day. Oh, hallelujah. This is your day. For your year for coming out of whatever you need to come out for. I cannot stress that enough. This is Exodus. We are finishing off Exodus. I recommend everyone read Exodus 12 through 22. And that will give you full details on everything we have done in this three-part series of coming out and getting your blessing from God. And the only thing it actually does is following God's instructions. How often do we follow God's instructions? And you know what? I like the way that that was said because 
Everything that we buy come with instructions. If you buy a TV, you get instructions of all the pieces and how to put it together. You buy a camera, you get a lot of instructions on how to put it together and how to use it. And God is giving us instructions for prosperity and success on how to use the word of God, how to use the power of God, how to use the knowledge of God for success and prosperity. Hallelujah in Jesus name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And in our scripture, it goes on to say, I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you. Now I am really, really enjoying this. And that's in Exodus chapter 12, verse number 13. And verse number 13 says, I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you. It's your sign. Oh, where is the blood? Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. By his stripes, I am healed. The blood that gives us strength from day to day will never lose its power. God set this up in the greatest direction I have ever seen. Woo, thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your word. Y'all know I get excited for the word of God. That word is powerful and it is true. The blood that Jesus shed for us, Jesus was the lamb of God. See, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is not going to change. His word does not change. We change and we change his word. But his word is guaranteed. In Exodus, they took the, the blood of the lamb. It was a pure one. It was the best one that they had. They put it on their doorpost and God said, I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you and your entire household. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you where no destruction and no plague will touch you. That's a sermon all in itself. That is a sermon all in itself. God said, I will pass over you and be your covering. I will take care of you. Oh, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. He tells us that no plague will come near your dwelling. He said nothing will touch you in your entire household. I will protect you. Oh, and he goes on and tells us in verse 14, that this is a day that you are to commemorate and remember forever for generations to come. And you shall also celebrate it and it shall be a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance, which means that it is the law. Are you celebrating the blood? Hallelujah. Are you really celebrating the blood? And that goes deep. Are you celebrating the blood, the blood that Jesus shed for us? All the stripes, everything he went through, the thorns in his head, the lamb of God. Are you celebrating the power of the blood? Because God gave us in Exodus when he set us free. He told us that the blood is a sign. He didn't leave that back in Exodus. He took it from the Old Testament all the way through the promised land to the New Testament. That this is a sign for you. And Jesus said, greater work shall you do in all power of the blood. You can plead the blood of Jesus over any situation that you have. Are you pleading the blood of Jesus? Because the blood is a sign.
that you are to take from generation to generation to generation to generation. Glory, hallelujah. The blood is a sign that you're supposed to celebrate as a lasting ordinance, as a lasting law, that you continue this forever. Woo, hallelujah, bless your holy name. And verse number 17, we're still in Exodus 12. It says that celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come because it was the very day that I brought you out and I brought you out of all of your divisions. And see, if we get into what all of the divisions were, which were slavery and bondage, and everything that goes with being bound and gagged and slaved and abused. He said, I brought you out of all of that myself forever. And sometimes I ask myself, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Spirit, that Lord, if you brought us out, how are we still in lack? How are we still in depression? How are we still in fear? What actually is going on? And the Lord said, you bring that back. It's just like the children of Israel. Every time they saw a little bit of adversity, every time they saw anything, they mumbled, they grumbled, they complained, and they always said from chapter to chapter, no matter what God did, I'd rather be back in slavery than going through what I'm going through today. And I was just amazed that God was so close to them. God was with them. God did everything for them. God took them out. God was taking them to the promised land. And every time they saw a little bit of adversity, not a lot. They was like, well, what am I going to eat today? I'd rather be back in slavery. What am I going to drink today? I'm thirsty. I need water. I'd rather be back in slavery. And that's what I'm saying. Just get a hold of that. Every time something comes up, it's not that God is not doing it. It's that we, as humans, would rather be under the slave master than under God. And that's the only difference. And that is, oh, just drop the mic. Oh, that is the only difference. Because we have to take action on our part, which is to believe, only believe. Believe that God is and believe that God will. They cried out to God. God brought them out. And they kept crying. And they kept crying. And they kept crying. I need water today. I'd rather be back in slavery where I know where the water is. It's a comfort zone. I need food today. I'd rather be back in slavery where I know what time they're going to eat. It's like they feed us at a certain time of day. And that is not where God wants you to be. God wants you to be able to trust him 100% that he is God and he will do what he say. Ooh, let's get back to the lesson. Oh, my goodness. And then my next point is verse 23. And that I'm just going to read. It's when the Lord goes through the land to strike down your enemy. He will see the blood on the top and the sides of your dwelling and will pass over your dwelling when he goes to strike down your enemy and the Lord he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down now you've got to get a good revelation of this one when the Lord is destroying your enemy, which he will do, and that's what we pray for. When he destroys your enemy, he will not destroy you. 
let me ask a question. Who is your enemy? Who is your enemy? That's what you're going to have to decide. And that's what you pray to the Lord for. You have lack. You have depression. You need your financial. You pray into your checkbook to fill itself up. Who is your enemy? When the Lord comes on your behalf of your prayers, he wants to see the blood. Can God see the blood in your household? Can God see the blood covering you? Can God see the blood? We are the temple of the Most High God. Can God see the blood on your forehead? Can God see the blood on your doorpost? Can God see the blood from top to bottom on the sides of you? When God comes in, he's like, who's messing with my children because he's my father? And he comes just the way we go. Somebody mess with your child. And I've said this before. You have zero understanding and you going straight in and hope nobody gets in between you two. Okay? When God comes in, he will not touch anywhere he see the blood. When the angel of the Lord comes, he cannot touch anywhere he see the blood. The blood is the sign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the blood is the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. What is your relationship to the blood? What is your relationship with the blood? The blood that Jesus shed for me on Calvary. Everything he went through. Everything. If you've ever watched any of the TV, any of the movie, The Passion of the Christ. If you've ever read the book. If you've ever read the Bible. Whew. And I tell the Lord every day. And I get frustrated sometimes. I will not let your death go in vain. You did all of that for me so that I can live, that I can live in the promised land, that I could live in the land of milk and honey. You did everything for me. I will not let your death go in vain. Glory, hallelujah. That's one of my passions. Not in vain, not today, not on my watch. Do you know how many times they beat him and how they beat him? And it was blood covered everywhere. Even all the way to the cross. Oh, it just makes me want to cry. It just, just touches my heart. I will not. Don't take it for granted. Do not take it for granted. God said, when I bring you out of whatever type of bondage you in, do, 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 do you want to start your own business and need a loan from the bank? Who is your enemy? Who is your Egyptian? Who is your oppressor? Who's holding you back? Who's holding you down? God said, I will remove all of them. But you, that's my guarantee to you. And he showed us how he did it. And all he ever says is, obey the instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants from generation to generation. We say a lot in religion and Christianity about the, um, the Ten Commandments. How long they was wrote. Do you know they still apply to this day? The first commandment that Jesus, that Jesus changed in the New Testament. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul. And love your neighbor also. We forget that. We diss our neighbor. Talk about them. Gossip about them. If they don't have any food, we don't bring them anything. We want to know what you did with your money. Nope. I ain't in that. If your neighbor asks you for something to eat, give it to them, and God will give you double. 
That's what you have to learn. Oh, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. He just say, obey the instructions. When you enter the land of milk and honey that the Lord has promised us is that when you get yourself out of bondage, that you promise to have the ceremony and you promise to celebrate that the Lord brought us out. You promise to teach your kids that the Lord has brought us out from generation to generation and to generation. And what happened in Genesis 12 and verse 24, and the people agreed, the people bowed down and they worshiped the Lord. And they followed the instructions and they did just what the Lord commanded. And it's all Exodus is, is how do you get out? By following the instructions of the Lord. They did exactly what the Lord commanded them to do. They listened and they received. They got understanding, wisdom, and knowledge from God Almighty. And we have a lot of things going on right now. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our provider. Jesus is our support. We don't have to really, as a child of the Most High God, you don't have to worry about the gas prices. You don't have to worry about the food. You don't have to worry about the rent or the bills. What you have to worry about and your number one priority is the blood. What are you doing with the blood where is your blood? Where is the blood in your house? Where is it on your doorpost? Where is it on the side of the door? Where is it on your temple? Where is the blood for you? Because this is your year to come out of anything that is defeating you. This is your year to come out of slavery. This is your year to come out of bondage and make today the first day of your year and celebrate and celebrate like it's your birthday. Hallelujah. I have been born again in the name of Jesus. I am coming out of bondage today and I will never see it anymore because he told us this enemy you will never see again. And I thought about that. If I will never see this enemy again then what am I supposed to do? Believe. Only believe. Be strong. Be of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. And follow the laws, ordinances, and instructions of the Lord. And when you ask God for something, he's going to answer. He answered the children of Israel. He came in a big cloud to talk to them directly. God still talks directly to people. He talks to me. He talks to you. He talks to everyone. We walk around with those little earmug, earpieces in our ears all day. Plugs in our ear. I don't know how you're going to hear God when you're walking around 24 hours a day with something stuck in your ear. And I... I'm just, I don't understand that. I'm just old school. Y'all just have to keep it moving because I don't understand that. But with the children of Israel, God did everything he said. When the people bowed down and worshiped him. And they did just what the Lord commanded and followed all the instructions and I'm telling you guys, he told them how to tuck their belt in and how to put their shirt in and their cloak and tuck their belt in and eat. He gave specific instructions. And when you see that God is so far in your business that he tells you how to put where to put your belt at and put your cloak in your belt and eat, oh my God, and tell you what time to eat, they followed every instructions to the letter. Oh, hallelujah. Praise your holy name. And they bowed down and they worshiped him. And at midnight, you know, they say God comes in the midnight hour. But I'm telling you, at midnight, the Lord struck down every enemy. And I really like this part. The Lord struck down every enemy from Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the prisoners, to the people in the dungeon, to everything that they owned. 
Pharaoh and all his officials, all the enemy that had ever been holding them down. They got up in the middle of the night. They were screaming and hollering and sad and stressed and everything. And what he says there in this verse, which is number, let me make sure it's 29 of Exodus 12. He said, and there was not one house without someone untouched. Now he went from the highest point to the lowest point of your enemy. Because there are people holding us back and there are people holding us down and there's all kind of things going on in this world. And he went to every house from the top, from the king on the throne all the way to the dungeon and there was not one that was untouched. I'm like, oh my God. And then Pharaoh summoned Moses, told him, okay, God showed up. I've been stressed out all night and whatever you ask, I will do. And that's where God makes your enemy come to you. See, we don't have to do a whole lot. Follow the instructions bow down and worship God and do exactly what he say. And they said, you can take, and you can have anything that you asked for. Okay. I'm loving that. I'm like, okay, so how do I get a new house? How do I get a new car? How do I get a loan from the bank? Okay. Bow down, worship, follow the instructions and believe that God is real. How do I get everything? And your enemy, the Lord, had made the Egyptians favorably disposed. All your enemy giving you favors now. They found you favorable. I'm like, oh my God, and gave them anything they asked for. That's how you do it. And then the Israelites, they journeyed. And let me tell you now. It was about 600,000 men on foot besides the children and many others went with them. And the enemy gave them anything they wanted. Just ask and go because your God is powerful. So you have to bring the power of God into your life. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And then chapter 13, 21, it said by day, the Lord went ahead of the children, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them and on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So the Lord by day went ahead of the Israelites. He will be ahead of you today. The Lord himself was a pillar of, was a cloud by day to keep them comfort, to keep them cool. And he was fire by night so they can see. And he lit up the sky and he was with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They could travel by day. They could travel by night. They had free reign. He's bringing you out of bondage. That is a good point that how he brings you out of bondage. Oh, hallelujah. And when their enemy tried to attack them again, because he will come back. When the enemy tried to attack them again, then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of them, in front of Israel's army, he withdrew and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud, which was the Lord, moved behind from the front to the back and stood. So you've got the angel of God that's standing to make sure nothing touches you because he promised you in verse number 12 that nothing would touch you as long as you followed his instructions and did what he said. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Woo, thank you, Lord. I'm your host, Rochelle Owens, and I'll see you next week.